So now I'm going to be talking to Steph Dyson and her guide dog Darcy. Now Steph is totally blind and has a very different host of disability accessibility requirements to that of someone in a wheelchair perhaps. So, Steph, are you there? Hi Mike. How are you my dear? We're fine, thank you. And yourself? Lovely. Not too bad, not too bad. So, I suppose the, the best place to start this would be, have you found yourself in any funny or awkward situations with your disability? Yeah, I mean, um, I lost my eyesight completely, sort of, just before I became a mum. I was severely impaired. So it's, you know, getting out with your child, picking up the wrong child in playgroup. Oh dear. And people going, that's my baby. They're like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I remember once getting, you know, trying to get the pram out, get the baby in the pram, and the little girl, come on, we've got to be out, we're late, we're late, we're late. And she's going, but mummy, but mummy, get me out, get out the door, shut the door, lock everything, get everything going, dog on hand. But mummy, I'm not wearing a skirt. Right? Uh. That would be good to tell me beforehand. <laughs> or I've, I've even gone off to a guide dog talk when my dog's retired. Yeah. Um, I, I've always kept my guide dogs. I retired once and I'm rushing um, my other half was off work he broke his leg and so he was looking after the little one so I'm rushing to get in the taxi and I'm sat in the taxi I'm, like, I'm on my way I've got it in my head what I'm going to say and I sit down and I stroke my dog and I say it's the wrong dog no. and the taxi driver goes it's not it's your dog like, yes it's the wrong one it's a German Shepherd yes I know it's a German Shepherd it's the wrong German Shepherd <laughs> And we had to whiz around the block and um, as I pull up, my other half stood by the gate and said, I think you need this one. Uh. Yes, no, I know, I know. But you just do things and, you know, if you're not finding it funny, then, yeah. you know, maybe that's not your sense of humour anyway. But there are times when I, I do things wrong and I think, that isn't so funny actually I didn't you know I, I yeah. can't laugh it off I can't do that I, and I do have days like that but other times you know we just think yep do you know what sighted people make mistakes so <laughs> you know don't have a problem with it that's a great attitude to have there Steph <laughs> um so now I, I'm right in believing that you you live in the Fylde Coast area um so yeah. With, with accessibility, obviously being totally blind, that probably throws in some huge hurdles with you know how you get into places uh, sometimes, or get around places I should say, is probably more accurately. Uh, and your guide dog, I imagine, can only take you so far with its abilities. So how do you, um, how do you like find out about somewhere before you, you go there? Or do you just wing it and let Darcy and your previous guide dogs, you know, go for it? Research is always good. I mean, and the advantage now with things like iPhones, with blind people find uh, accessing information a lot easier. So I would do like, for instance, um, travel apps, you know, um, mobility apps. So I might research bus stops, bus stations, journey times. Yeah. Using apps, uh, I like phone somebody. But a lot of the GPS apps allow you to be lost. So if you can get lost, but then you use your app and you think, right, well, I'm not meant to be on the street, but I know where I am. I can always in a taxi. I can always do a FaceTime call. It allows you to push your barriers, push your boundaries, sorry. So you can just go out that little bit further and try this little bit more things because when I first started using a guide dog, there weren't all those facilities. So if you got lost because your uh, muscle memory of your walk or you daydreamed and you can't remember how many side roads, you really would be lost. I mean, I am very lucky on the Fowl Coast because we have quite a few businesses that, um, uh, you know, they put disability access to the foreground and they champion it. So we've got quite, um, we've got the Sandcastle, we've got, um, Merlin with the tower and they do a lot of do good work promoting it so they make it easier so they make it that they go out and they tell other businesses look you don't have to spend a fortune you've just got to listen ask the question and listen and that isn't a disabled thing is it at the end of the day if you can learn to listen to people you can learn to 
supply or produce or provide better services and that will go through any uh, ability or disability yeah but the i just find that quite often you have your technology you have your guide dog and then there'll just be one little thing a parked car in the way and you're just thinking i don't know my way if i don't go down this road yeah and you have bad days like that and you and it um just throws you out it just throws you out yeah, yeah it throws you out and if that's why talking to people um sometimes you you, you got to understand that you are disabled and each day you go out there's going to be challenges yeah. and some days are going to be good ones and some days are going to be bad ones so you know, yeah don't expect to be a hero every day no <laughs> oh, that's good advice there you you mentioned uh, obviously like merlin with blackpool tower and town castles and things like that um and and uh, accessibility champions uh, if you could uh, say to a, a business, you know, uh, any any advice, if you could give them, you know, a top tip, what would your top tip for a business be for someone with a disability similar to yours, whether it's total blindness or even partial blindness? Have a human point of contact. So if I'm coming to your building or I'm ringing your building, that is someone for me to speak to. Because not everybody's a tech whiz, not everybody can go online and post questions or go on the website it's that person that person at reception that person who's at the door that person on the end of the phone they're there so you can speak to them because a lot of the time it's that nerves you've never been somewhere you just need reassurance that there are facilities and if you do see a guide dog owner or a visually impaired person anybody with disability that they say hi can I help you that's it you know that is the first and big thing can i help you and when you hear that you know you found somewhere you can start your journey that is an amazing top tip there steph and uh, i'd just like to say thank you very much for talking to us today thank you for inviting me so there you have it someone with blindness could have spent an entire day planning to go out somewhere and by someone parking in an inconsiderate place, their whole day is then ruined because of it. And the cracking top tip from Steph, if you see someone who looks like they might need a bit of help, please don't be afraid to just ask them, can I help you with something? If you would like to find out how your business could help accessibility for someone with any type of disability, please go to accessfilecoast.co.uk.